You'll see here I'm starting with a grid setup in my document that's going to give me nine spots for thumbnails. Now, I like to work digitally for this, but many artists prefer to keep their thumbnails as loose as possible, and that generally means working with pen and paper. So you should use whatever method you are the most comfy with, because the whole idea here is to get out lots of ideas as quickly as possible. So it's all about quick thinking and economic mark making. You might notice I'm making a lot of quick marks, and I'm also erasing. Well, part of what I'm doing here is letting the drawing dictate the design. As my lines build up and I'm drawing this shape, I begin to see some accidental overlaps. In a sense, it's like automatic drawing. I wait for interesting shapes to reveal themselves, and then I go in that direction. So then maybe I'll erase some things and keep working, but I'm allowing the design process to speak for itself. When I start drawing one of these sketches, I don't really necessarily have an idea in my head of what it's going to end up looking like. It's sort of like the idea of brainstorming. When you start doing word association, you don't really know where you're going to end up. But that's the power of it. You come up with ideas by forcing yourself to go through a specific process. Well, the same goes for these thumbnail drawings. If I already knew what these nine drawings were going to look like, it wouldn't necessarily be as interesting. This forces me to come up with new ideas that I've never had before. Creativity is not some magical force. All it is is a process. If you can design a process to walk through, that means you can reproduce your creativity. Whatever the design challenge is, you know the steps to create an interesting result. And once you figure this out, the blank canvas is a lot less scary. Really, the way I've set up the document is not all that important at this moment, but in the next video, you'll see why I'm keeping the line work separate. This step I'm doing here, the thumbnail sketch, is the most important phase of a drawing. I'm going to say that one more time because this is absolutely the most important part. It's safe to call this the drawing. All the rest really is just polish. This is the foundation, the blueprint. This is the real idea. At the same time, I can tell you that it is tempting to skip this step. I've gotten myself into a bind more than once by skipping this step and going straight into the actual image. After all, who'd know? You know, these are personal drawings. You generally don't even show them to people. But every time I tempt fate like this, I get five or six hours into the painting and then I realize I'm at a dead end. Something about the composition is just really not working for me. And that is the most important aspect. If your composition doesn't read clearly, you can't polish it to a final. There's no way that you can course correct and save yourself if what you're ultimately drawing is a bad composition. And really that's what the thumbnail is for. All you're doing here is figuring out a nice composition. I'm not working on beautiful details. At this point, I don't have color in there. It's just a black and white compositional read. What am I looking at? Is it interesting? Is it balanced? This is where the ideas of 2D design really come into play. So if all the polish in the world can't save a bad composition, it is worth taking some time on these. I think one of the hardest things to teach someone is how to make a thumbnail. Because really what this thumbnail is is a visual shorthand. Everybody's thumbnails are going to look different, and everybody's process is going to be different to make thumbnails. But this is just sort of a condensed version of a longer drawing. I'm giving myself a visual note that I can then expand into a finished drawing if I want to. Now, I may not. The whole idea here is to make lots of thumbnails and throw most of them away. But I can look at each of them and see a final drawing. And probably the way I see a thumbnail is going to be different than the way you see my thumbnail. It is a very personal thing. So as a result, it's going to be a challenge for me to explain exactly what each of these lines does. I've heard the anecdote that when asked how long it takes someone to draw a thumbnail, they might say, my entire lifetime, or my entire career. And there's some truth to that, because every thumbnail drawing you do is like a culmination of everything you know about drawing, just shrunken down into a tiny little package. So everything I know about perspective comes through in the way that I do one of these quick drawings. If I didn't know how to draw in perspective, it'd be impossible for me to do one of these thumbnails. Because this is perspective, but tiny. 
Same goes for the shapes that I'm using. When I'm envisioning these shapes, I am utilizing all the principles of design that I learned in my foundations classes. So really, these are just expressions of your own ability to draw. The better you are at drawing, the more fluid your thumbnails are going to be. And if you're having a lot of trouble with thumbnails, it might be an indication that you don't have strong enough drawing skills. Because even though thumbnails don't need to be beautiful, they do need to communicate a lot of information. For instance, these are in perspective. If I were to draw this without perspective, it wouldn't really convey the right information. It wouldn't give me a good foundation to build the final image on. And this is just one more reason why it's so important to have a strong drawing foundation. Digital painting just makes things more confusing. Before you do any painting, you gotta be able to draw. And thumbnails are a great test of that skill. I like the look of black marker or pen lines. And that's why I'm using such a bold brush here for these thumbnails. But unlike traditional pen, I actually like to erase a lot. I think my process is almost as much as about erasing as it is about drawing. So with this in mind, I'm going to be switching back and forth between the brush tool and the eraser tool constantly. And since the idea here is to be decisive and to make quick decisions, I find that a hard-edged, full-opacity brush as well as a hard-edged, full-opacity eraser are the best. In fact, I think this is why so many artists like doing this phase with pen and paper. It just forces you to be decisive. And with a real pen, it even takes away your ability to erase. But for me, I've never really gotten terribly comfy with pens, so Photoshop is the best for my taste. Because I can get the look of pen, but the flexibility of erasing. In the case of these designs, I'm not using a perspective grid, although sometimes I will, because really these tanks are essentially a box. And since I'm pretty comfortable drawing a box in perspective, I'm just going to wing it here. But if I were making a more complex scene, maybe a full environment or something with a lot of foreshortening, I definitely want to be more specific about my perspective. And for this, I'd use a grid. But for this case, I'm not going to worry about it. It probably means I'll have to correct the perspective in the later steps, but this is just going to speed me up a little bit. Everyone has different challenges when working on art. For me, one of the hardest parts of making a thumbnail is the camera angle. Because really all I'm doing here is designing a vehicle. But the viewer is only going to see this vehicle from one angle, the angle I display it from. So in that sense, the camera angle has a big effect on the final result. So with this in mind, one solution I found is to open up Google Image Search and type in some related subject matter. Here I've typed in a tank, but you could really do anything. And what this does is it gives me a huge grid of photos taken by people with cameras. Now that may seem obvious, but it really has a cool effect. Because what I'm looking for here is different camera angles. And if I were just imagining camera angles, I might be likely to pick ones that people never stand at. Like if I were to do a really high angle camera, that would not be very much like a photo that you would take. And as a result, it wouldn't feel as realistic. But if I can borrow the camera angles used by these photos, it somehow lends an air of believability. And of course, I can find this reference anywhere, but I happen to like the way that Google Image displays a big grid of photos. Because this way I'm able to get an overall sense of the collection. I'm much less likely to steal from any individual photo because I'm going to sort of take them all in at one time and get a bit of a visual average by looking at all of it at once. So no matter what specific technique you're using, it's great to end up with a large variety of thumbnails. For this process, I'm only going to show nine, but it really wouldn't be that out of the ordinary to make 20 or 30 thumbnails. If it's really important, sometimes you might make 100 thumbnails. But know that you're going to throw 99 of those pictures away, or at least you're not going to use them for this particular final result. But that's great, because what you get is the best of a variety of options. You know that what you're going to work hard on is better than all the other stuff that you've thrown away. Making thumbnails is a way to help you find your personal best. And if I really just draw one sketch and consider that my final, 
I have no way of knowing if there would have been a better possibility. So when you're trying to figure out when to finish making thumbnails, it has to be a balance. The more you do, the better your final result is going to be. But of course, they take time. So I'm going to stop now, but you might want to do more than just nine. Now in the next video, we're going to take these thumbnails and give them a little bit of polish, explore them a bit further.